everybody, it's Anne, and welcome to my Pick 6 Wonder Facebook Live class tonight. I'm so glad all of you could join me. As I mentioned, I will be recording this, and it'll be available in the group after we're done. Um, Dave is going to be monitoring some contacts and we're going to come over here and just make sure that it's going live. So let me just have a quick minute here. There we are. Okay, there we are. We had to make sure that he could see me. So I am going to just say hello to everybody um, in the beginning here. And then, once I get going, I am not going to say, Hey, Carol. Hey, Jennifer. Whoever has popped in. Um, that way it won't be distracting for everybody. But everything I show you tonight, you are welcome to um, save. You're welcome to use. This group will stay open basically forever so if you have questions after the class feel free to post them and um, I'll be happy to answer them so I am just going to Karen's here hello Karen um, and I'm sure people will be popping in now we've got gosh 60 75 people that signed up for this which I'm so excited to share with everybody. That's one of the things I love the most about being a demonstrator is teaching and providing value for everybody. So let me flip around my camera and we will get started. All right, and I'm gonna turn on another light here so we'll have plenty of light to work with as I'm showing you everything. Well, could you guys let me know if any of you are planning to make your cards along with me? If you are, would you just put the word make in the comments? And my faithful assistant, Dave, is going to let me know. Um, I'm not going to make all 14 cards tonight, but I am going to show you each one and give you plenty of instructions. If you've had a chance to look around in the group, you will see the template and the instructions that I've posted and also a few pictures. Before I sign off tonight, I'm going to show you all of the cards that I made. And um, after the live is done, I plan to go through, and if there's any leftover questions from tonight, I'll try to answer them. And as I said, feel free to leave them afterwards. Now, tonight's cards are going to be the basic version using the template that I gave you. Of course, you can add embellishments, use different punches, die cuts, all sorts of ribbon, gems, rhinestones, whatever you like. They're your cards, of course. You can make more at one time than you like. Um, I want this live tonight to be for anyone, beginners to avid crafters, so that's why I'm going to be doing basic ones. Um, I'm going to show you samples, some of them that I created with 12 by 12 paper, and some are 6 by 6. So let's talk briefly about choosing your paper. Now, this is the celebration catalog, and if you don't know what that is, feel free to leave a comment and I'll tell you later. But this is a free 12 by 12 pack of patterned paper. So you could use all or some of the patterns in this pack and you could cut it at 
down by 6 by 12 and then cut it again. So you'd actually have four pieces. And of course, all of these pieces are double-sided. So that gives you a lot to play with. And since this is free, that is a great choice to use. Now, let me show you a couple other ones. Out of our... This is quite a bit behind you. Okay, okay. And Dave just mentioned that um, what he sees is a little bit of behind what he's hearing me say. So we may be a little bit behind in the comments, but it'll work. So in the mini catalog, there's also a bunch of paper. This is the painted Christmas paper, and you'll see some samples later using this. I'm focusing on Christmas because that's what a lot of my customers are thinking about. But this method you could use for birthdays, thinking of you, sympathy, whatever you like. This is a fun paper pack that has a bunch of our faithful little pets on it. So if you either have pets or just love animals, this would be an awesome pack to use as well. And it is found on page 31 of the mini catalog. Alrighty, so let me show you what I'm going to use tonight. Now, of course, since I'm a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, that's the paper that I'm going to be using because that's what I use and that's what I sell. But you feel free to use any patterned paper that you like. So what I'm going to be using tonight is the Gingerbread and Peppermint 6x6 paper. If you start out with 6x6 paper, it is easy peasy to cut up using the template. Now, these are the pieces that I'm using. One thing I want to caution you about, okay, is that you want to make sure that the patterns on both sides are going the same way. Now, on this piece, some of the trees are up and some are going down, so it doesn't really matter. On these other pieces, as I'm scrolling through, this one, you can see, has some going different ways, but it will work out fine. This piece, it there's no pattern, and this piece, it has a pattern, but it really would work both ways. Um, let's see, one question that Dave has told me, uh, Rhonda, you wanted to know how to get the catalog. At the end of this, I will put my um, contact information in there, and you can email me, and I'll be more than happy to send you a catalog. Okay, so that's our pattern paper. Then the other thing you're going to need is seven sheets of eight and a half by 11 plain cardstock, and you want that to match your patterned paper. If you're not familiar with Stampin' Up! products, that's one thing that is so awesome. Everything matches. Then you're also going to need one eight and a half by 11 sheet of either white or vanilla, depending on if there's white or vanilla in your paper. I have white, so I picked white, and that is going to be for your greetings, your sentiments, and we'll talk about that a little bit later. Alrighty, so we are going to cut our paper, and we're going to do that together, so you will all at least start out on the same page. So again, we've got seven pieces, and we're going to cut it in half with the long way in our trimmer. That way we'll end up with 14 card bases. Now, 
If you wanted to, you could use white or vanilla thick cardstock or regular for your base, and then you would just need a quarter of the sheet on the top. I prefer to use this whole uh, colored piece, and then I'll show you what I do on the inside. So I'm going to cut all of these pieces at five and a half. So too bad I have a terrible voice or I'd sing Jeopardy music for you. Dave's isn't much better, so we'll just listen to the sound of my lovely paper trimmer. <laughs> All right, and this is real red, and I had cinnamon cider, and here's another piece of real red. It really, I could have made them all real red if I wanted to, or all another color. It really doesn't matter what you use for the base. This is early espresso, and this is Old Olive for my last two pieces. Nice Christmassy colors. Okay, then the next thing that we would do once we have all of our seven pieces is we'd move that cutting blade out of the way and then we'd go ahead and we'd score them all at four and a quarter. Now, if you wanted to, you could cut your paper in half at four and a quarter and then score it at five and a half and your cards would open at the top. But tonight I'm gonna just do them all the same way because it's a little bit easier. All right, so let's just get these all scored and I know you all probably know how to cut and score your paper, but at least for the beginning part, I want to just have you see how easy it is to get all these bases cut. And I've actually done three sets of Christmas cards using this template. So I will probably embellish some of them a little more, but you know, if you didn't want to, if you, some of my customers send out 200 Christmas cards. If you happen to send Hanukkah cards or some other kind of holiday card, this will work just as well for that. And you just use whatever stamp set you like. All right, we're honing in here on the last two. And here we go. Whoops, I lied. Now the last two. Okay, so we've got that. And here we go. So now we've got all our card bases done, and I'm going to set those aside. Next thing, I'm going to bring in my six pieces of my designer series paper. And I'm going to keep my little template right here so I keep us on track. So, as you can see in the template, this is six inches across. So, I'm going to put that up. I'm going to butt it right up to the top of my cutter. And the first cut is at two and a half. So, I'm going to line that up. And I like to start it when I'm cutting in the middle so I get a nice clean cut and we're going to take these bigger pieces and I'm going to set those off to the side right now then we're going to work with the cube card which is design one first and that piece also needs to be cut at two and a half because we're going to want a two and a half by two and a half inch cube. All right, and if you don't want to cut yours all at once, no worries, just cut them all separately. All right, so now I have these pieces. Let me show you, while I'm thinking of it, a cube card. 
so you can actually see what that looks like. Here is the cube down on the card. I haven't put the greeting or ribbon on there. All right, so as our instructions tell us on the cube card, We've got six pieces. We're going to use two pieces per card. So that's going to give us three cube cards. And you'll see back here on the back where you see all the cards, you can see there's one, two, three cube cards. And you'll be able to see how many of all the other ones there are as well. Hopefully that'll be a little easy for you. Now, the other thing you might have noticed, I have marked right here with my Stampin' Write marker because it's water-based and I can easily wipe it off later. The first thing that we need to do for this card is we need to cut a slit in all of our pieces at a one and a quarter inches from the center. So. I'm going to line up this left edge at one and a quarter, and then I'm going to put my blade right here at that one and a quarter inch mark. And there's a little mark right here on my blade, and I'm going to just cut right up. So now I've got a slit. I'm going to do that for each one of these six pieces. So again, you're going to line it up on the left. You're going to get your blade right at that mark. And when you've got patterns that are, you know, busy or have a lot going, I do recommend that you go ahead and put a little mark right there on your trimmer. That will enable you to make sure you get all your pieces cut at exactly the same spot. All right, there's one. I know Dave is over here just so sad that he isn't creating with us. <laughs> Those of you that are my customers and know Dave, know that he has made videos for me on my YouTube channel, Stamp Maven, I think the most popular video is still Dave's punch repair video. As a matter of fact, I got an email from someone who used that video today to fix her punch. She remembered, oh yeah, Dave's got that out there, and that helped her. Okay, now we've got six pieces here. And we're going to put them in pairs. Now, you can use either side. You want to just kind of pick ones that you think will go together. Right? Okay. So, what we're going to do, let me show you with this one. We're going to be like Pac-Man. Chomp, chomp, chomp. We're going to put these slits together. And now we've got this little square and you've got one on the top and one on the bottom. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get some glue dots because we need to secure a couple of the sides so then we'll be able to fold up the other one to make it work. So I've found the easiest thing is just to whoops get it right on there pop on some glue dots. You can use any kind of adhesive you have, but I find the glue dots probably work the best. They do kind of stick to my fingers sometimes, but hey, that's all right. All right, so we're going to put that one down. Then we're going to do the same thing over here on this opposite corner and you'll see why here in just a minute. You want to try your best to make sure that you get the top piece and the bottom piece covering each other so you don't have a little end sticking out. 
All right. So there we go, right? Now, we are going to fold this piece over to here. And if you have a bone folder, just go ahead and secure that. And then take your snail. Oops, it's not snail anymore. It's seal. And you can either use snail or your green glue sometimes I have to stick a little pin in mine because it gets a little bit stuck do you ever have that trouble all right then you could also use glue dots to secure that but I find when I'm using a bigger area I like to use this glue then you're gonna move this one over and you're going to fold that down, take your bone folder, then take your glue, and voila! You've got four different patterns here. Then we're going to just get one of our handy dandy card bases. I'm going to use the cinnamon cider and it would go on like this and then later I'm going to show you how we're going to put on the um, ribbon and our greeting. Now if you wanted to again you could cut a piece maybe a quarter inch bigger than this maybe of red maybe of green to give it a little bit more pop. But remember, tonight we're doing simple. All right, let me show you one more time on the cube, just to make sure you've gotten it. So we're gonna slide that in here so that our slits go in together. And you could just type in the comments, got it, if it all makes sense to you, okay? so. Now we're going to, I've got this here, so for this, instead of using my glue dots, if this cooperates, this one must be getting near the end. Let me grab another one. I keep several of these Tombow glues on my craft table. I love this glue. It's so forgiving if you make an oops and you get something stuck where you don't want it. It's very forgiving to move it. Okay, so now we're going to put some more under here. Well, good grief. Come on. There we go. Okay. Don't we love live videos? Okay, now we're going to flip over this piece from the left and secure it with our glue then we're gonna do this piece over this way and we're gonna secure it with our glue here and it doesn't take much you don't want it but see right here how I didn't quite line that up all I need to do is scoot it over if I had used seal or something else it would have been a little harder to get out of there. Okay, so that is our three cube cards, which is design number one. Let me just stop here for a quick second and give you a chance to ask any questions. I'm going to take a quick sip of water. All right, Dave said it looks like y'all are up to speed. Woohoo! Way to go, ladies! All right, I'm gonna bring my trimmer back in. Oh. Those are Stampin' Up glue dots. They actually, let me show you the ones I used on this sheet came in one of our paper pumpkin monthly craft 
kits, but normally they come on a roll like this, and you get 300 of them on a roll. So you get a ton of them. I save, let me show you my baggie here. I've got glue dots and I've got Stampin' Dimensionals. I have a paper pumpkin subscription because I love, even though I'm a demonstrator, I create a lot of projects. Sometimes I love just to sit back, do something that's easy peasy that I don't have to think about. So I get the paper pumpkins myself and there are always tons of extra supplies. All right, so now we're going to move on to design number two, which is these four cards right here that are going to be made with the rectangles. So remember, we've got these pieces left from our first cut, and we need to cut this now at one and three quarters, which is half of what we started with, right? So we're going to put them in here at one and three quarters. Let me make sure I get that lined up. And I love my Stampin' Up! trimmer. It cuts through all of this paper. So we're going to have six pieces here. We're going to have six pieces here. There's going to be three pieces on each card, and there's four cards. So what we want to do now is lay these out. I'm going to turn these over this way just so I can see which patterns I want to use and which I don't. So I am going to use these. Those might be okay. And then I'm going to get these out here. I love these patterns. And you can use, you don't have to use them all. If there's some that you hate, don't use them. Okay. So now we want to put them in groups of three that go together. So you want to kind of pay attention to your patterns. So I'm going to pick this one. I'm going to pick this one. And I'm going to actually pick this one here and use the same one. So that's going to be one of mine. Then I'm going to come along here. I'm going to use these. And the thing is, you might, as you're doing this, find some, and when you're putting them down, you think, oh my goodness, that looks terrible. And then just decide, okay, I'm not going to use that. It's your card. So nobody's going to tell you what to do. All right. So let's see here. Let me work this first. So I've got little candies on both of those. And then I'll put that in the middle. And then on this one, I think I'll do this one. Okay? Eh, do I like that? Eh. Actually, I think I'll do it like this. All right. So now for this card... Let me bring in one of my samples. So here's one that's finished. I actually added ribbon a different way, and I added some embellishments. But the basic deal on this one, you're going to line up your three squares, or you can also do it this way and have it up and down. Just kind of pay attention to your pattern. So let me grab, I'm going to get a real red piece here. Okay, and I'm going to pick these. And what you do is you totally just lay them out here randomly on your card. You Let me move that up. I don't want you to stress about how you do it. You're just going to lay them down in kind of a whimsical way. 
and then you're going to just get that glue going. And if you don't like it, like I said, when we, it sounds like somebody's at our door, so Dave's going to go and see that. I may, I think I'm going to just go ahead and put this one down first and then put the middle one up on top. Okay, so there, and see what I said about the glue kind of be, being forgiven, forgiving. Okay, so there's that one. Now, I think for this one, I'll use cinnamon cider again. All right, let me grab that. All right. Now, this one I did straight up and opening this way. This one I'm going to do like this. Okay? Again, random, random, random. So, we'll just turn that baby over. And can you see how this is going to make your... Um, Christmas card, or if you do tons of birthday cards, you can get them all done at one time. Okay, I'm going to do this one down here, and then this one, I'm going to just put it up this way a little bit. Okay. And then, you'll see later how we put on the greetings. Okay, does that make sense? And then you're going to do four more, or two more like that, and you'll end up with four. Alrighty, let me pause here for just a second so I can get the next supplies ready. So, now remember, we've got these big pieces right here. Let me bring back in my handy-dandy trimmer, and we are going to do design three here and that is this one here where we've got two pieces and then we have kind of a belly band piece and then we've got one that looks a little different and I'm going to show you how we end up getting that one so let's cut so we need a piece this is three and a half and we need a piece at two and a half. So let's cut that. All right, and then we've got our two and a half piece. Then for our belly band piece, we need a piece that's three quarters. And you could, of course, measure it this way or this way. You know, we all have different ways that we measure. Some people turn the trimmer upside down. So, you know, it really is just how you want to do it. Okay, and there's my pieces. And then this is what we're going to have left to do card design for. All right, so now with this, we need three tops and three bottoms on our card. So, oh, wow, I actually like how these turned out. Just, just like it. So, let me grab another card base. And I'm going to get red here, my real red. Now, I'm going to show you how I think what is the easiest way to do this card okay let me get it here in the center you want it to look let me grab one okay so here is that card the top the bottom there's the belly band so you can see i've got the same distance around here on the card so the way you do that to make sure that it looks right is I get the top one positioned then I get this bottom one positioned here 
and I cheat and I put a little bit of scotch tape right here in the middle. You're not going to see it, so it doesn't really matter. And you'll notice these do overlap a little bit. Then I'll come back in and I'll take my glue and normally I use my little silicone mat, but it seems to have run away. I bet Dave borrowed it when he was secretly stamping. He does that a lot. He steals my stuff. All right, just kidding. So now, and it, it can go either way, this or this, right? So let's get this down. Oh, and he found it. Actually, he probably went into his office and brought it back. Have you guys ever used this? This is the best thing. You glue on this, any kind of glue, it won't stick to your paper. And then all you do is like you take your thumb and it wipes right off. Six bucks, best six bucks you ever spend in crafting. Okay, now I've got these little three quarter inch pieces. So which one shall I use? You just kind of get in here and match them and see, okay, which one do you like? I like this one. So that's the one I'm going to choose. Then you're just going to take it and you're going to put it right down in the middle here. And that is going to make like a belly band. Isn't that cool? Okay. So the next one you do the exact same way. And we would pick, um, again, which one do we want? Let's see. Eh, there's no cinnamon on that one, so I probably won't do that. Okay, maybe I'll do this one. All right, so let's move this one off the radar. All right, then we've got these left. Okay, so I might go ahead and put some cinnamon on this and then probably use a cinnamon base. Okay, so now we've gotten our big pieces on there. We've gotten our belly band. Oh no, we've got three pieces left. Did Anne screw up and make a mistake? Why no, she did not. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut these little pieces as it will tell you in your instructions. This is three and a half. So now we're gonna put them into our trimmer and we are going to cut them at one and three quarters. All right. And look what we're going to end up with. We're going to have six fun little pieces. And we're going to have, they're all going to be, well, if I turn them over right, they're all going to be different. This is ornaments, trees, and then these are the other ones. So now the last card is this little guy right here where you put on these six little pieces. So it's like waste not, want not. So now I'm gonna grab an old olive and again, you could put this this way or this way. I'm going to do it this way. And I'm just going to start. Let me get them to where you can see them. I'm going to just start putting them here on my card. Now, this can be a little bit tricky, especially on camera. Let me just give this a good crease with my bone folder and hopefully it'll stay down a little bit better and easier to position. Now, this one, this tree kind of goes sideways. 
So what I might do is use this one instead, because it's not quite as obvious that that's a tree. And I think I'm going to put that down here because I want the cinnamon to kind of be away. And then we've got this one. And we've got our little dots that are sticking to my finger. But hey, that's all right. Did any of you guys, I'll probably date myself here, did any of you guys watch the I Love Lucy show when it was live? So do you ever, if you do any kind of live videos, do you kind of feel like Lucy? Ah, I love doing live videos though because if I make a mistake, then I just stop and tell you. Whereas if I'm filming, then I feel like, oh, I got to stop and redo that. So now what I'm going to do is just put a little piece of tape very carefully. And I'm going to get another one here. And I'm going to put it kind of carefully here. And then... I'm going to pick it up, and of course it's going to flop over, but that's all right. I'm going to get it back on here. Then what I'm going to do is get my glue here on the back, okay, like this, and then we're going to put these puppies down. There we go. This is probably the most challenging of the ones we've done so far, but hey, it's going to work. Well, maybe it's going to work. So we'll get that one here, get that one placed down, and then we'll flip these over. And that actually is going to work pretty well. We're going to grab this guy and get him in. Okay, like this. All right, then you're just going to, you can ooch them around since it's the glue. And then I will put my sentiment right here. And this little piece of tape, what I'll do is I'll either peel it all the way off. My nails are kind of short. Or I'll just roll it back, and then when I have my greeting on there or my ribbon, you won't even see it. Okay? So, you can keep kind of peeling like this. See what I'm doing with my fingers? And I can see that it's ripping right there, but you know what? That is not going to matter because we're going to get the greeting and we're going to put it right over that. Matter of fact, I have my greetings right here. I'm going to show you later how I did it, but I'll just put it right on here and I'll have my ribbon come down here and it will cover everything up. Okay, so that now is our fourth card using design three. So now we've got these pieces left and we are going to make hearts out of them. We've got six pieces and they're going to make three cards. So we're going to need two matched up together. Okay, and we'll do them like this. So, do you think we're going to use a punch or a die cut? No, 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 we are not. We are going to cut hearts like we're in kindergarten again. So what I'm going to do, and you can kind of just decide what um, side you want. I'm not going to fold it this way because I don't want this to be on the top. So I'm just going to fold it like this. And this is going to be a fatter heart. Okay, so let me get my bone folder, okay, and watch. This is going to be so fun. So I'm going to take my scissors here, 
and I'm going to start, uh, make sure I get the right thing, I'm going to start with the folded edge here. And I'm going to just go around and I'm going to make a heart. I'm going to go up here and then I'm going to come around and I'm going to go down here. Okay. Then, without opening it up, I'm going to do one in the center. Okay? And notice, I am not measuring. I am not worried if it is exact. I'm just cutting. So, now, voila, I have these hearts, these big hearts. I like this side better, of course. And then I've got these that we cut out of the middle. Okay, so we're going to just leave these here for a second. But I wanted to show you, I also have these pieces left. Wouldn't it be cool, let's say you have a baby or you have a puppy, a kitty, you and your husband, you could put this on top of your photograph and that could become your Christmas card. What do you think? Okay, now let me show you. That was kind of the fat way. Now we're going to fold these pieces like this. So they're long, the long way, and we're going to have a longer skinnier heart but we're going to do it the same way my fold is right here so i'm going to get out my scissors again and we're just going to start coming here and cutting my little heart boom we're going to go back into the middle and zip around here and boom now we've got our skinny hearts like this and we've got the other side we've got these little frames if you want to use them if you don't want to use them throw them away then we've got this piece here which is kind of the skinny one then I would cut um, these right here, right? Okay, so now we are going to get a card base and I actually have My hearts here and then I've got my pieces left over and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take one of those rectangle pieces you'll put it down and then you'll take your hearts and you'll put them on the top of your cards like this if you want you can actually put the smaller heart in the middle and it can be like this now let me get a couple of my other ones here where i've done hearts so here's one i did with one of the patterns i put my solid piece over here my greeting and my hearts here Let's grab another one. Here's one here that I did with this same gingerbread paper. I just, I wanted three hearts on this one, and I think I had an extra piece. I might have even cut it wrong, but it, you know, it doesn't really matter. You can make it work. All right, so now let's get these out of the way. Let's go ahead and put this one down so I can show you 
a little bit about the sentiments, okay? So I'm going to use my real red here. I'm going to pop this here. If you wanted to, you could even use Stampin' Dimensionals. So let's bring in my silicone mat. Okay, put on that glue. Put my little heart here. And then I'm going to put my other one. Yeah, I think I like this side better. I'm going to go ahead and put this one like this. Okay, now let me bring in, I have done ahead of time all of these greetings. Okay, so I, I took, and let me show you what stamp sets I used. I used the Holly Jolly Wishes, and I used Tis the season to be jolly, and it's the most wonderful time of the year. I did wishing you all the beautiful gifts of Christmas. The old standard, Merry Christmas. And this one, this is one of my favorite sentiments. May the beauty of this season bring you joy and warm memories to cherish throughout the year. So, what I did was... Remember this piece of our white paper? So what I did is the first time I cut it at three inches. And let me bring in my visual here. <laughs> this is what I had left. Can you see that? It was three inches by 11. And then I punched one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This is the punch that I use. Now, normally, I recommend that you stamp first and then punch. But with this little guy, it is very easy to do your um, punching first. So here's my three inch piece, and don't worry, I'm not gonna punch them all, but you just start and punch, and then you just go down, and you keep going all the way, then turn it over, and I sort of misjudge this a little bit, but what you can do is go ahead and punch it like this, this tag still looks fine. It'll just be a little smaller on one end. The other thing you can do, you can cut your paper. So we're just going to measure using this because it'll be quicker. So this will be one and three quarters. Then you can take your punch. And again, you can just go and just punch to your heart's content. And you get about four of them this way. Okay, then you can do your eight here. You can cut this in half. You can also, if you've got scraps, maybe you've got a scrap that is, let me go ahead and punch this just to show you. Let's say you have a scrap piece hanging around that is this width, okay? So I've punched up this one, then I'm gonna just take my snips, and then I'm gonna come in, punch again, and you know what? Gonna make sure that's all the way down, punch it, snip. So it's really, I'm sure, you probably have a way you like to do it, and then just do it that way. It really doesn't matter. Then you end up with all of these little pieces of your punched piece. Then you just stamp them all. You can stamp all the same sentiment, or you can stamp different ones. All right, then the last step is... Whoops. 
Sorry, Dave. I didn't know your foot was right there. So the next, oh, it was my stamp set. I thought it was Dave's foot. Then you can pick your ribbon. Now you'll notice here, this is white ribbon. And on one of the cards that I made, I decided I wanted cinnamon cider ribbon to match my paper. So I just got out one of my Stampin' Blends and I colored it. So since this, I'm not going to use cinnamon cider on here, I'm going to use old olive. So let me find my old olive. And then all you're going to do is make sure you have a piece of cardboard or something under your ribbon when you're uh, coloring it. Then you're just going to go along like this with the fat end of your blend. And you're going to just go along here and color it. You could actually leave it white. It's fine if you want to leave it white. It looks great either way. Okay, let me just do a little bit more so I can show you how we're going to attach it. Now, I love using my stapler to attach my ribbon to my um, sentiment piece. You may not like staples. I find people either love them or hate them. So I love them. So I'm going to staple it on here. Now, what I'm going to do is, let me show you a little trick. I'm going to fold this in half and I can tell right now that that's too long. So I'm going to just chop it off with my scissors like this. Now, if you don't like staples, you're just going to attach it behind here. But since I like staples, I'm going to take one of my little handy dandy glue dots over here and I am going to put it right on this card. And you can see that I put this ribbon down before it was totally dry and it got on my sentiment, but I don't care because I'm going to cover it up. All right, so now that that bottom part is stuck down with that glue dot, I can come in with my stapler and voila, now I have my ribbon. Okay, now all I have to do is figure out where I want my sentiment on my card. I'm going to put it right there. Now, you could use Stampin' Dimensionals. No problem. I mail a lot of my cards rather than hand deliver, and our U.S. Postal Service, you know, it seems if I go to one that they charge me one amount. If I go to another one and it's a little bulkier, they charge me more. So I typically put uh, less dimensionals or no dimensionals on my Christmas cards. Now, remember in the beginning I told you I like to use a full half sheet? Well, this is what I do then on the inside. I've got a bunch of white paper, my basic white Stampin' Up! cardstock. You could use vanilla, of course, if your designer paper is vanilla. This is cut at four by five and a quarter, so then it's going to fit right in here. I'll glue it down, and voila, I have my card. Now, you might want to stamp more on the inside, and that's perfectly fine. Again, tonight I'm just kind of showing you the basic easy peasy way. Well, okay, that is what I have for you tonight, but I want to wait just a minute or two, see if there's any questions. I also want to... I have a question. Oh, Dave has a question. He wanted me to ask you if 
the Facebook video that you see is behind what I'm actually doing. And can you estimate how many seconds? All right. While you're thinking about that, I wanted to show you this is my blog, stampmaven.com. If you haven't popped over there, I would love for you to do that. I have a little box where you can sign up for my newsletter. And if you would like to do that, you will get a free tutorial in your inbox for a beautiful project. Um, let me actually get that project and show you what it looks like. I've got it over here on my table. So it is for this beautiful card. You'll get a free PDF. I put out an email newsletter every week that's got tips, tricks, projects, and it's free. I let you know when there's Stampin' Up! specials. This is my Stampin' Up! website, and I'll put that in the group in case anybody happens to want to order any products to make your fabulous cards. Well, I am so happy that you guys were able to join me tonight. Some of you may um, be seeing this on the recording, and I'm happy that you watched that too. So if you have any questions, feel free to ask me. And on my regular Monday Night Lives, I just do those on my regular Stamp Maven page on my Facebook. I also have a YouTube channel, which is Stamp Maven. I'm on Twitter as Stamp Maven. And I just started a TikTok channel at Stamp Maven. So I'd love for you to pop in on those too. I do different things on my different channels. Okie dokie. Have a great night.